Uh, my name is James Dalton. I'm with Prince Corporation, and we're a distributor for many products here. Our big focus with Farmer John's is keep away the moles. You know, how do we do that? Keep away other warm-blooded animals that really destroy the wonderful plants and other items that y'all have in your garden or in front of your house. What we want to do is help you two different ways. Either take care of them by removing them uh, or just repel them naturally all the way to the point of doing it naturally to the point of not natural and of course uh, destroying them. So to get started I'm going to go over many different products how they work, what they work, what they work on. So for any application that you have at your house, hopefully we'll find a solution. Okay? Any questions to get started? You mentioned if they're dog friendly too. Yes, absolutely. Good point. Uh, pet friendly, dog friendly, very good point. Um, my background is I've been in the industry on the agriculture side for many years. So we work with a lot of heavy duty chemicals from both sides, natural and really strong. I'm from Texas, if you haven't been able to tell with the twang, some people brought up today. So if you have any questions, don't understand something, please just let me know. So to get started, I'm going to go with mole trap. Of course, mole trap is going to kill that animal. It's going to kill the mole. Pros and cons about it are, right off the hammer is, you got to go out there, you got to set it. So when you set it, like anything that is spring-loaded, make sure it's set before you remove your hand and or foot when you're setting it. It's highly effective. The mole will go through a trap that's here. Looks like a hoop. When they walk through there, it'll trap. It will destroy the mole. Big thing is, for a lot of people that use this, it's good for many, many years. You can reuse it, but the damage is going to be there. When you start seeing the damage in your lawn, you're going to want to go out and apply it. Somebody's got to go out there and take this dead animal out of the ground. If you, you want to do it, you're good. If you don't, Ask the neighbors, ask the kids. They'll go over there and play with that mole um, and go from there. It is effective. If you want to destroy them, this is an effective way to do it with a hoop. It's just kind of a loop, and it'll latch up. Um, staying on the mole side before we get into the different animal repellents, moles are usually dealing with, this is kind of a repel all, but the mole product is, this is based in Michigan. This is out of Galeen, Michigan. A lot of the testing was started in Michigan and still we do it. We use a lot of this product. The great thing about it is this is all natural. This is pet friendly. A lot of the mold products that are out there, the number one ingredient is castor oil. So castor oil because it gives it a bad taste. So when a mold goes through there, a mold's number one food source are insects. They do eat grubs. Everybody's like, oh, they eat grubs. But when grubs are not there in June, July, and August, they got to eat something else. So a big part of their world are earthworms. They eat a ton of earthworms this time of year. Everybody goes out there. They can see it. Earthworms are up. They're feeding the robins. And, of course, the moles are chasing them because those earthworms are moving to the top. Once they get to the top, it's easy food for the moles. Okay? Other insects that are coming out, either larva, pupa stage, or even adult, they're eating whatever they can get a hold of. So in a typical day, a mole can go up to and over 25 feet of digging. So when you see a lot of your lawn destroyed by these raised runners, as we call them, it's just one mole. They're very territorial. They're rotten. They're mean. They keep the other ones away. So what they're doing is they're chasing for new food. They eat so much. They constantly eat. Morning, night, they're constantly eating. Eat, literally eat and sleep. So when they're doing that, if they run out of food in their little area, they're going to move on. If that food is tainted, that's the goal of this. Food is tainted, tastes bad. They, of course, move out faster. So when you apply something like this, you want to make sure and get them away from your lawn. We have a small area that's here. We want to push it to the neighbors, and that's kind of the ultimate goal. Once the food is bad, they're not going to come back. But you do, it is natural. You do have to reapply. So the reapplication rate on this is usually, the way I do it is tax day. No, they wouldn't need it. It just coats, coats their skin. Yeah. It coats the flavor of it. So this is castor oil. This is the highest amount of castor oil on the market. And it's based right here in Michigan, which is nice. 
it'll break down because it's granular. But yes, once it's watered in, it'll start to break down naturally. Well, I don't know how much rain is coming tomorrow. You don't want wash off. Okay. That's the big thing okay. is you don't want wash off. If it's a nice powder and just gets the ground wet, beautiful. Okay. That is fantastic. Uh, good time to apply is now, 4th of July, election day. That's the way I always think about it. Tax day, 4th of July, uh, election day. So the applications that go down, this little bottle goes a long way. Since the concentration is so high on it, this is a pound per thousand square feet. This small container will cover 7,000 square feet. We also have a larger container that I'm sorry I don't have here today, but it literally comes in a bucket. And that bucket is a half an acre. The reason we sell so many of those buckets is the average size lawn is 8,000 square feet here in Michigan. So you have eight, eight, and eight. There's 24,000. That's your whole year. And the reason we put it in a bucket is we were a big recycle, reduce, reuse company. The bucket, you have a bucket once you're done. It also has a tight lid because of the granulars. If they get wet, of course they get wet. They start breaking down. It's not good. That's why we don't use a bag or they don't use a bag. Same thing with a bucket. Put the lid on it. It's good. If you don't use it all in one year, that's fine. Keep it till next year. There's no expiration date on it as long as it stays dry. Okay, and for the dog, castor oil is a natural laxative. So just keep an eye on them. <laughs> I've got a lab, and she's, she's a lab. She eats whatever. Um, she has gotten into it, but usually they just want to smell it and see what it is. If they do taste it, it's got um, ground pepper in it. It's a white pepper and a garlic oil. They just want to, they're just curious. They usually don't eat it, but it will get on their paws if you put it out. Let the dog go potty. Just wipe down the paws. Because uh, it does smell like garlic if you want to hop in and get the garlic. There's no difference between this. They just ran out of these shakers. <laughs> Part of the world we're in today, we ran out of the shakers. Yes, correct. And the spreader settings are on the back. Very good point. So here's drop spreader and broadcast. And when you're doing the application because a pound per thousand, you'll think there's no way this is covering enough. It is. It is. It smells fantastic. It smells like garlic. Everything that's in here that can be food grade, is food grade, okay? Which is castor oil's food grade, white pepper, and garlic. They're all food grade. We just do that because we're in Michigan. I mean, we're, we want to bring this. It's a small family-owned company. We want to bring that value to you. So moving on, next thing's next. Repelling different deer and rabbit. And I'll go through each one of these. Main things on repelling deer and rabbit for many years it's either egg or blood, one of the two. Any product that you usually pick up is usually one of those two. They started moving into capsaicin, which I will cover in just a minute, but you have different applications. Early in the season right now, everybody knows what putrescent eggs or eggs smell like. It's rotten. It's unbelievable. It smells really bad. It's organic, so they can spray usually vegetables with it. The problem is, if you have deer and rabbit coming up to your front door, you really don't want people walking up to your front door and it's smelling like a big paper factory. It just smells awful. The other part is dried blood. So dried blood, it's exactly what it is. Once it gets wet, it's going to coagulate. It's going to look like cottage cheese, but it keeps them away because it smells like a dead animal. Other ones will go out there. The ones that attract dead animals are skunk. Possum's okay, but the dried blood will keep away most of your warm-blooded animals. This is just kind of a box that's there. Same thing that's here. You can see it's Omri listed, and this is a part of also blood, ready to use. It's just a smaller container. You can hear it's kind of a granular bait. With this one, it's just a larger container. It has a nice, you know, what is it, Parmesan top to it. Must have got a good deal on it. Same thing, topical. When something is natural or topical, you want to keep a lookout for when your sprinklers turn on or when it rains. When it rains, since it's topical, it's going to wash off. So get out there and apply it. My suggestion to anybody who's trying to apply or repel a certain plant, go out there and just give it a pepper. You know, just kind of spray it. You don't want it dripping off of it because in reality, once it drips and hits the ground, it's going to go away a little bit faster than being on the plant. The natural sun, the UV lights, 
take away some of that efficacy, take away some of that smell, and then of course, once it gets wet, what you're really trying to do is cover that new growth. So you know a hosta is going to come up, it's going to grow about an inch, three days later it's going to be four inches. When it's coming out of the ground and it's crowning, that's why you just want to go out there and reapply. Sometimes it's tough, people want to do a one and done. We don't live in that world. Even if it's heavy duty, unless it's lead poisoning, you put something top, you have to reapply. Usually reapply, think of the growth on the plant. Any plant that's out there, you want to cover that new growth, so just pepper it down. This is egg-based. Then we get into a repels all. Number one ingredient, putrescent egg. Okay? All of them, liquid form, RTU form, number one ingredient, putrescent egg. So the cloves and the garlic oil, clove, of course, is a really pungent smell. Garlic, everybody knows, pungent, pungent, pungent. You want to get the animals that are used to coming in and not having this smell. That's what makes them stop. Like something's new, something's different. They're very curious. They don't want to get involved until they get used to the smell. And they're like, mm, we're going to try it. We're hungry. It's just like you and I and everybody else. If we get hungry, we don't like Brussels sprouts. That's all that's there. We're going to eat it. So same thing with this. Your reapplication rate with the eggs, same thing. It smells. Like everything else, it smells. What are you trying to protect? What time of year? That's really the focus that you are looking at when it comes to any of these repellents. And that's what I want to do. This is the perfect time of year. Stuff's growing. You're buying good plants, new plants. You want to keep them away so they can start to get established and start to grow roots. Okay? I'm rattling a lot, so y'all have any questions? That's a tough one. Marigolds. Yeah. Plant some extra marigolds for the deer. They just don't like the pungent smell. Um, to put these on is fine. It's not going to, you know, the regular smell for butterflies and stuff like that, it's not going to affect them as much as what they're going after for eating. Okay. It's okay. a good question. Yes, ma'am. Absolutely. Blood, blood meal, it's all based on blood. Yes, it does. All blood. All blood does, yeah. Uh, blood meal. It is a repellent and also protein, so it helps on both, both parts. Now, what about, like, I've read cinnamon, yep. and they eat my daffodils okay. if I didn't do it. But, yeah, the egg. so think of the, those are pepper. So pepper-based. Some people have even gone to, like, Sam's Club and used paprika or cayenne. Yes, it's just something that's fragrant, and of course, if you smell that in a powder form, it gets into your nasal, it hurts, you know, they don't, they don't like that smell and or taste. Problem with it is, you got to reapply a lot. So there's nothing to help it suspend. So it's coming out as a powder form. Once the water hits it, it's going to soak into the ground when it comes to those. They do work, they're effective, but it's how you give the application of that particular thing. So I'm glad you brought that up. Yes. That brings me to my next two products. I'll go over this in a second. They bought my last one a couple of seconds ago, so I apologize. Here it is. Um, this is a hot pepper wax. This is a capsaicin base. So capsinoids are pulled from peppers, any kind of uh, red peppers, cayenne peppers. It's kind of the heat vein. So they get that into a liquid form. They put it here. Of course, it is hot. It might not be as hot to us. Being from Texas, we like it really hot. Might not be to them. But their senses are so, so sharp that a little goes a long way. The capsinoids that are in here are a small amount. When you spray this, please, for the love of God, don't spray it into the wind. Get the wind at your back and apply that way. Okay? You'll learn very quick that you have made a mistake. It's oil. As in any oil gets on your skin, it's there. Wash it off all you want. It's going to be there. Wash it off really good. You'll learn a lesson. It is very effective. Capsinoids and capsaicin is a very effective topical and internal um, part. Still, it smells. Keep the wind at your back. On anything that you're applying on the top, please have the wind at your back. You really don't want that egg or blood blowing back on you. You're going inside, sitting on the couch and it's there. Okay? Questions, concerns? 
because we've gone from blood to egg and then egg to capsinoids or capsaicin, which is, of course, a natural pepper. You're going more of a natural way. And I apologize, I have only a picture <laughs> of this. And for the love of Pete, I'm going to hand it around. Um, this is the same company that brought you the mole. What they did originally is um, I ran the agriculture division for Repel-X. So the agriculture div division used a liquid capsaicin-based repellent, which, of course, it was topical. Topical, they had to do reapplications, but at an ag level, big level. You're spraying a lot of acres. What we wanted to do is bring that to the local market and the retail market, and the way we could do that is suspend it into a granular. So the granular soaks up that particular capsin capsaicin, excuse me, and the capsinoids are in there so we can handle it, we can touch it. The other part that we brought to us from veterinary and medicine, we use something that goes into anything porous and drives in to a section of the plant, for instance. All your roots are porous. So that porous liquid goes into the plant. So the liquid goes into granular. The granular breaks down naturally and slowly. The other part goes into the root. By the time it's at that base, the derivative that brings it in, which is using veterinarian medicine, goes right into the plant. So once it's in the plant, it can be a hot, sunny day. It can rain. You can spray it down. You can water it down. You can hose down your plant. Doesn't matter. The capsaicin is inside the plant, and it lasts the entire season. Once you do it once for the season, you're good. You're done. We brought this to a many, many years of testing and tested with different universities across the United States that we had to bring the efficacy data, which is very important to have in any product that you have background and certification to say, hey, it works. So that particular part is hostas. I was, I've been talking to many hostas. That's why I sold out today, and I apologize. Hostas growers, it starts to crown out of the ground. You know, you do the application here. You do a topical spray because this takes roughly two weeks on soft-sided plants, kind of like a hostas, for it to get into the plant. Once it's in the plant, it's there for the entire season. During that two weeks, you want to spray something topical because, for one thing, the plant is growing like a, like a weed. It's growing very fast, and it's pulling in all these nutrients and all of the product. But once it's in, after that two weeks, you don't have to do a topical application. That's the beauty of it. You pay a penny more, and you get the entire season of protection. If something comes over that's used to coming to your lawn every single year, like a deer, bunny, they're going to go over to that section, that part of your garden, and take a nip of it. Once they take a nip of it, they're getting a mouthful of capsaicin because it doesn't smell. One thing is, please, don't put this on anything edible. The capsaicin is food grade, but we don't want hot lettuce. Like it, Just don't do it. Don't do it. Don't get it close to there. Yeah, just <laughs> leave it alone. Some people are like, I want a hotter jalapeno. Don't do it. Don't. It's not worth it. Um, but for everything else that's non-edible, this is something that I recommend, and we've tested it. And it's a small company. So there's a phone number on the back of it. We want you to call and say, hey, this works. This is cool. Or I see a little damage, and we'll ask you. If there was a little bit of damage on that hosta, for instance, do you have a piece of it? Nine times out of ten, they'll take a nip of it because they get past the smell. They're hungry. They take a nip of it, and it's right there. It's right below where they took the nip. That teaches them, don't touch this. Like, change your path. Because their path, they've learned since mama brought them out there, and now they're going to learn the path to stay out of that area and associate that smell to the taste inside that plant. It's a reapplication every year. We put them in our tulips. When we do tulip plantings in October, we usually use like a bone meal or something like that and put just a little scoop of this and it helps save your tulips from the voles that are eating those things during the winter. During the summer they'll come up, it'll have a little bit of protection on it. You still want to do a reapplication in the summer or in the spring as of now. Topical, add the new capsaicin for the season uh, for Repel-X, 
Good to go for the entire season. Okay. Questions, concerns? That's a lot of information, and I'm sorry. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yeah. Sorry, I know that's. Yes. Yeah, good. <laughs> yep, I have a list of some people who have brought it up. There's three pound. We just ask, and this, the container is small, so please remember, a little goes a long way, but follow the label. The label will tell you exactly what to use, and the way it's all gauged is the size. So if you know it's your hostess, you, you see it every year, two foot by two foot, it will tell you on the label on the back how much you need. There's a scoop inside of that container and the other one. We also have tablets. The tablets are just compressed, exactly the same thing, and the tablets are in a smaller container. It just follow the label to a T. The small tablets are a 50 count. 50 will cover a lot. So if you had a two foot by two foot hosta, in reality, you only need four tablets for that one plant, or roughly a scoop of the granular. Follow the label, read it. Questions, concerns? The cool thing is it's a small company, so more than likely when you call that phone number, the owner of the company is going to pick up the phone. Like today, I think he's mowing or something. I don't know what he's doing, but I'm um, good guy, good people, and we're based in Michigan, or they're based in Michigan. I was with them for quite a while. So questions, concerns? A lot to cover. Right, like this with your your blood, you'll get like the red, like the Cheeto hands or what have you. Um, with this particular or with this particular one, your hands are non-porous, but we always ask you wear gloves. It's not going to pull into your system. Yes, the granular for the systemic, it's capsaicin. If you're working with small amounts like this, it's not going to affect, and your hands, not porous. You don't want to rub it on like this, but the good thing is, yeah, wear gloves. I mean, we've got a, a great assortment of gloves here that we're doing in gardening, it's really to protect you on any chemical that is out there. It can be blood, putrescent egg. The blood and putrescent egg on liquid form like one of these or this or this. As you all know, it's, it's an oil. So if it gets on your hand, you're going to smell that putrescent egg all day. And oh, baby, smells good. Same thing with the blood. It just stinks. It just smells. Um, capsaicin on the liquid form, it will burn. I mean, it's going gonna, it's gonna to bite you. It'll grab a hold of you because it's capsaicin, and it's an oil. It's there. The granular, it's suspended inside that granular. So you'll, you can touch it. You can actually smell it. Like, give it a wave. Don't give it a <laughs> No. Kind of get the lid. Everybody wants to smell it. You'll, you'll get used to it. Okay? Questions, concerns. That was a lot of info, and I apologize a little quick. And I'm glad you all came out. I hope. Oh, nice. <coughs> oh, yeah. <coughs> so if you did, like, for instance, with the rabbits, I would spray this or even put down the blood. Are they eating anything? Do you have anything planted yet, or are they just coming out and starting to? <coughs> Your blood. You're going to do a blood meal, either this guy or this guy. Yep. The hole and around the area. You just don't want to concentrate on the hole. You kind of want to give it a powder in around the area, and they'll start moving. Yeah, blood meal. Like a granular, this is a granular, and so is this. This is more of a, a bigger, just a bigger container. They'll get the, the smell. They just can't take the smell. Definitely reapply every three to four weeks, and it should be good. Just find out where they're moving. <laughs> they're going from the deck to the front yard or the, you know, find out where they're moving. <clears throat> okay. How big is the deck? Okay. Can you get under there, or is it third level? Gosh darn it. Yeah. You have money with a Dotson or a little Jack Terrier or something? 
<laughs> Especially under there because it's tough to apply it. Gosh darn. That's tough because you can't get under there. It's right on the ground. <clears throat> that's that's really tough. Being on the outside since they're so protected, I'm sure they're close yeah. to the house. Yeah. The hole itself. That's that's a tough one. Um because you don't know what they're eating. You know, they're kind of going out at night and eating whatever and coming back home. I'm gonna say a Dotson. Little Dotson, little Jack Terrier. <laughs> this is gonna be somebody. <laughs> Since you can't get to them, that's the tough part. But to protect your plants, because they're going to start eating those or anything that's coming up, that's where you want to spray either blood or do the systemic of stuff that you're planting fresh. Yep, that one's a tough one just because it's you don't know where they're at. 15 foot's pretty big, pretty good size. Rotten things. <clears throat> yeah. No, yeah, I know. <laughs> Yep. They're just always looking for more food. So when it gets cold, they just follow their food. So, of course, earthworms, everything else are moving deeper. They're deeper in the ground. We just can't see the tunnels. They are constantly eating. The amount of oxygen that they, they don't need very much oxygen. Okay. Yep. So they're still, you must have a wetter area that's there. So they're not coming all the way to the top. The the uh, earthworms have not breached. They have not come out of the ground in that particular area. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. So what you're looking for is you'll see the runs, and then at the end of the run, you'll see kind of a, a patch, blotchy spot. That's where they're bedding, more than likely. Oh, yeah. I'll go out and sit in my chair with a few with a blotch fork. With a pitchfork? Hammer it down. Nice, if you can catch them, that's pretty good. Yes, ma'am. Oh, God. Uh huh? Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh, my. Just to get to it. Yeah, that's a better alternative for sure. And we don't have it here now, but there there are poisons. It looks like a worm. Yep, never again. So there are horror stories that I've heard being in the business of even if the mole ate the entire worm, my dog's a retriever. She's going to go retrieve that thing, put it in her mouth, and bring it to me. It It's bad. Like, you just... You just kill a family member, not a dog. You just kill, you know, there's nothing wrong with it. Don't get me wrong because I know I'm online. Um, it's effective, but just remember your loved ones, your pets, your kids that come up and holding a mole and it's dead. And they're super soft. They're soft, almost like a chinchilla. They're super soft. Um, but the problem is your kids, if you have kids, dogs, anything that will either eat or retrieve it, you really don't want that poison in your dog's or cat's mouth. In my particular. Yeah. Yeah, thank goodness. Thank goodness. There, I've heard many horror stories, which is really sad. It's a family member. You know, our animals are family members. Um, questions, concerns, I'll get out of y'all's hair if if you're so the, good. So the mole stuff. <clears throat> yes, sir. If you can count the moles in the middle yard and you just want them done, could you just do a perimeter? Remember, they're coming from the bottom up. Yeah. So they're not going to eat in that particular perimeter. They're going to come right underneath that and start eating here. Yeah. And it's very inexpensive. This is 16 bucks or $17 for 7,000 square feet. That's, that's a big one. Even three, you know, the larger buckets, I think, are $54 or something like that. But that's half an acre, 24,000 square feet. So we do an application. If you have like an acre, for instance, or half an acre at an application, we usually say split it up. Like start from your house, do half your lawn, roughly on big lawns like that. Week later on the weekend, Saturday, if you're working, do the other half. So what you're doing is you're pushing them to an area, and then you've got that nice border, bordered area. If you live on a tree line or like a nature preserve or something like that, every year there's going to be a new one that comes in. Even though you scared those ones out, the perimeter I still wouldn't trust because they're coming from underneath. Uh, early in the season, your winter application is just as important as your spring application. 
because it protects so much during the winter, the fall and winter. Gets them out of there, keeps them out of there. Okay. Questions? Yes, ma'am. Lead poisoning. Yeah. Because groundhogs are so big and so destructive. They're eating a lot of vegetation. They're not doing anything that's, uh, you know, um, insects. They're not eating a lot of insects. It's all vegetation. Yeah, that's going to be, borrow his Jack Russell. Um, no, the systemic will go inside of certain plants, but you would, if, if they're eating a certain plant, you could put the systemic on there. They'll keep away from it, but usually groundhogs have such a wide area that they're eating. That'd be, we would love for you to buy them by the, the tonnage, but you'd have to buy a lot of, a lot of systemic. Um, but if it's a certain area and they're eating a certain plant and or shrub or tree, for instance, then yes, you can do the granular systemic. Yep. Then systemic, absolutely, because it's a concentrated area. You have it on your deck or whatever. They come up there, they'll take a bite of it, capsaicin. Yes, systemic granular, absolutely. I was thinking you were talking about like your backyard in a field. Oof. That's a tough one, but if you have plants or shrubs that you really want to save, systemic granular. Well, I'm assuming he'll, she'll pull in a three-pounder. It's just the larger version of the little three-pounder. The one-and-a-half-pounder is roughly this size. Um, the three-pounder is just a little bit bigger. And they make them bigger, but just get it started, see what you do, and see what she brings in. Questions on it, call us. You know, we're happy to help, um, and he is happy to help, and she will have a lot more information now, and I'll be her pest because I'm out here every couple of weeks with them. Yep. Well, good. I thank you, everybody, for your time, patience, and learning more about how to keep these pests away. And hopefully we'll see you all soon. Thank you much. Thank you.